This morning has not been a very good morning for me. You see, for the past two weeks, I have been number crunching. I've been analyzing my data. And to do this, I'm using a software called R, which effectively means I need to write lines of code in order to run the analyses. And for me, this is a very difficult process. I am not a computer person. I am not a coding person. I've never done this in my life before. So it's a huge learning curve and it's very difficult. But you know what? It's okay. I make slow progress. I figure it out as I go along and slowly, step by step, I get done what I need to do. But this morning I updated the software that I am currently using and for whatever reason, goodness knows, they've changed some things. So they've changed the way the data is imported into the software and some other bits and bobs along the way that I still don't really understand. All I know is that my lines of code that I have been writing consistently for the past two weeks are no longer working and this is incredibly frustrating for me. So before I threw my precious MacBook across the room, I thought I would just take a break, step back, do a YouTube video, because I realized that really I haven't chatted to you about what my personal day-to-day -day life is like. I have chatted a little bit about what it's like to be a marine biologist, what it's like to be a PhD student, a bit about some sciencey stuff, but really I haven't showed you what my work is currently about, what I'm currently doing, so that's what I will share with you today. So as I mentioned, I am currently desk bound. I have collected all of my data. I'm in my second year of my PhD at the moment. So what I'm doing now is I'm busy analyzing my data. And one needs to analyze data because that's how you figure out the story of what you study. You've got a whole suite of numbers, but now you need to figure out what they're telling you. So this over here is my working space. This is my desk. As you can see, I have a really beautiful view of Table Mountain from where I sit, which is great. I have a lot of note taking that's going on because I am not a pro at any of this. And this is the software that I'm currently using called R Studio. And as you can see over here, there's lots of lines of red, which mean, means my code is not working, unfortunately. And this happens quite a lot because, as I mentioned, I'm not a coding person. So when I come across a problem, I use the ever technical, super scientific tool of Google. Nope, that's not Google. Oh, Google. Seriously, Google is my best friend. And here you can see a couple of tabs open, um, which will hopefully provide some solutions to the problems I am experiencing. Uh, most of the time I will have to run multiple solutions to find one that actually works and this is a very frustrating process and hopefully by the end of it I haven't teared most of my hair out but eventually I will get my code to work and when I do there may or may not be a little bit of a happy dance involved. Thankfully my day is not only about numbers and statistics I also do quite a bit of writing. You see in the academic career you will attend things called conferences and these are great because it provides an opportunity for you to meet other researchers in the field and to just see what is the latest research that's happening around you. So hopefully this year I am planning on attending two or three conferences, but before I can go to these conferences, my work needs to be accepted into the conference. And for my work to be accepted into the conference, I need to let them know what I'm doing. So you have to write something called an abstract, which is basically just a summary of your work, submit it to them, and hopefully these will be accepted and I can go to these conferences. Another task I am currently busy with is turning my master's thesis into something called scientific papers. Because you see, you spend two years doing your master's, effectively writing a book, that's what your thesis is. It's a book that you hand in at the end, and maybe your supervisor will read the whole thing if you're lucky, but most of the time they'll just read certain chunks, and you will have two or three examiners that will read your thesis and examine it, and that's pretty much the only people that will read your thesis. So for your master's, you spend two years writing this huge book that at the end, two or three people will read, and for some other reason, we call this an accomplishment. Anyway, so what you actually need to do is then turn your master's thesis into smaller readable chunks and publish these into the scientific realm that other scientists actually read. So that's what I'm busy doing at the moment. I had submitted one paper that came back to me with some reviewers' comments and some changes that needs to be made. So that's what I'm busy doing. 
and then I need to prepare another paper to submit to another journal. So this is what my day consists of at the moment. I'm sorry it's not a little bit more exciting, but I will prepare a part two video, which will focus on the more exciting stuff that has already happened in my project, the fieldwork side of things. And for this, I'll take you out into the big blue. I'll show you some video footage of how we caught our stingrays, some of the more exciting things we did, show you some beautiful pictures of my study site. So please stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, share it with other people who are interested in marine biology because this is pretty much what most of it is about. Um, so until part two, I hope you all have a happy day.